All right, so a uh, little uh, right around one o'clock this morning, we received a call for a chemical leak from a rail car uh, from the, the rail company. Um, they reported that it was uh, hydrochloric acid. Um, we sent multiple units, including hazmat team uh, command. They, they said there was a cloud from the, the rail car um, as we arrived, crews made an assessment. Indeed, there was a cloud from the rail car. We couldn't, we have to stay back far enough that we don't have an issue of getting too close and being part of the problem. Uh, but at that point, we found out that the rail car contained about 30,000 gallons of hydrochloric acid. Um, we checked weather, we checked which way it was moving. Um, there was a shift in the wind while we were here and evacuations were ordered. So uh, we, we go by our, our charts, weather, and we determine who needs to be evacuated. That alert system was activated and put into place. Um, Phillips Highway was quickly closed down. Uh, we had great help from JSO uh, and their team. We had drones to be able to fly up. Um, we sent a crew in to assess the situation. They found the leak. They were able to put a strap on it and stop the leak. Uh, we've determined there was approximately two to 300 gallons of product that has gone on to the ground. Uh, so there's still a small cloud from what's dissipating in the ground, but that's not a hazard to any of the public at this time. Uh, we've still got a few crews on scene, not many. Uh, we're about to turn it over to a private hazardous materials company once they have all their people in place, and then it's their responsibility to do the cleanup. Um, out of curiosity, um, this was this rail car just like just sitting there kind of a situation or was it like about to uh, go in a, to a certain location kind of what was the circumstance with the actual rail car uh, we really don't know um, basically they call us we're not you know it, it didn't appear to be in transit um, it appeared to be sitting uh, but the fact that they had people around that were able to see it probably saved a lot of uh, potential problems as well how many people were evacuated if you have, had to give an estimate? I, I, I have no clue. We, we basically, we, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts in here. So we set up a cone and determine where the wind's going to take it. They, you know, then our EPD department goes in and maps it out and they send out the alert. JSO assists us with the evacuations in the area. I know um, there was only one business on Phillips Highway that was affected. They quickly closed that down. Um, but command, our command has a history of hazmat and he was on top of everything and did a wonderful job. I should have asked that. I should have been a little bit more, or uh, added more clarity. W was there a specific radius, maybe of like a, a half a mile stretch or an, a mile, something like that? Well, so. at, at one point, I mean, we were talking, depending on how much product was on the ground, what the weather was doing, we were talking about a two mile rate, uh, evacuation zone. Gotcha. Yep. We didn't get to that stage, thankfully, um, but the potential was there. Okay. Uh, so initially it was maybe about, at least maybe a mile uh, to two miles? Um, no, because Essentially, no, I, I, I don't know what, what the distance, you're putting me in a, I, I don't know what, exactly what okay. the position, the okay. distance is. They, they figure that out somewhere else and they mapped it out and then, then they send out the, uh, the uh, alerts from there. But, but it, it's been lifted, right? Like that evac? That was, evacuation has been it's lifted. lifted. Okay. Uh, Phillips Highway has been reopened. There's, this is no longer a hazard to the city or the, the citizens. Time frame, so you, that was about maybe like an hour of like the evacuation in, in order or like- No, we were, we were probably uh, two and a half, closer to three hours. Okay. 
once, you know, they, they determined pretty quickly that evacuations had to take place. And let me just say, we don't take that lightly. We're not going to evacuate people, especially at one o'clock in the morning for no reason. Um, a lot of thought and consideration, but first and foremost is their well-being is what we're mostly concerned with. Um, hydrochloric acid, talk to me like kind of effects on uh, what could happen to people. Burn the skin, uh, serious irritant to the eyes, depending, you know, it can do serious damage to the eyes. Um, respiratory is an issue as well. Uh, it's not, it's not something that, that you want to mess with. Um, we were fortunate that it's very calm, um, little, probably a little humid, so it may have kept it lower, but, uh, it didn't move a lot. So do we know if this cloud or whatnot ever like made its way across? I don't know which way the winds were going or if you have any. Well, when we, fir when we first started, it was moving to the east. Uh, no, it, uh, we don't believe that it ever got that far. Like across um, Phillips Highway? Or no, we, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't have affected anybody at that point. Um, I think we were notified early enough that it wasn't an issue. Um, we look at potential and we, we try to stay ahead of the game. That's, that's our job. We are trying to mitigate it and at the same time make sure nobody gets hurt. So we were ahead of the game, so to speak, um, and no, it did not. When they first arrive, or they have to stay back, but when they first approach the, the tanker, I guess it's a tanker car, um, and they're gonna put the strap on to, to stop this leak, do they do anything? Do they put anything on the ground? Is it is it flammable? Is it explosive? Is it no? They do they have to put like any no. triple F or anything down or anything like nope. that. No, no, nope. they on the part that leaks. You know, so when we first get here, uh, yes, we do. We stay very far back, and command said everybody, you know, stop here, don't go any further, until we a make sure we know exactly what the product is we're dealing with, you know. B, we know all the situation, we know which way the wind's moving. You know, there's, there's so many things that we have to take into consideration for our safety as well. So, no, they don't, they don't have to put any, it's not flammable, that wasn't an issue. It's, it's they're on air, their skin's protected, their, their bodies are protected. They approach cautiously going into what we call the hot zone. Is the, the rail car itself, is that at East Coast, Florida East Coast Railway? Is it parked like in their I, yard, I believe train so. Yard? I believe so, yes. Um, as far as the, and as far as you know, it was just sitting there, wasn't hooked up, ready to depart or anything? Uh, that I don't know. I mean, I think it's hooked up. I don't know if it was ready to depart or anything. Okay. I don't, but you know, I don't know what the. As far as you know, one moving. As far as and I know. And then we saw Red Cross. Uh -huh. Any idea? Oh, well, I know you have an idea, <laughs> but uh, can you tell me why they're here as well? Uh, because something like this takes a lot of time. I'm honestly that we're we've taken care of it and it's under control in three hours is is amazing. Um, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the case if if JSO wasn't as much of a help as they were. But they were planning for us, feeding us, taking care of us making sure that everybody who was in there working was cared for. Setting up like a comfort zone or something like that. Hey, it's more and more out. food and drinks and, sure. you know, because you're, you're middle of the night. Um, Could be here for the long haul. We, the, uh, I, I would have expected to, to be here a lot longer than we were. Um, but again, we can't, we, we can't thank our partners, you know, JSO for the help in the evacuation, the shutting down the street, their drones, um, it was, it was seamless. When it comes to the two or 300 gallons on the ground, is there any sort of like water table issues or hazards or creeks or? They, so bio is here, environmental's here. I mean, there's a lot of people that are going to watch that and take care of that. Um, what's going to happen is we turn it over. The, the rail company will be responsible for making sure that it's taken care of, whether they, you know, they have to, they have to, um, I can't even think of the word now. They, they have to um, neutralize the product so that it's not an issue, so they can get close, then they have to clean it up. Uh, I just have two, two part questions, talking about the um, uh, American Red Cross here. Mm -hmm. um, how many 
first responders, especially with JFRD, or those responsible for specifically being at that rail car in the area? How many people were there, like working that scene? Um, if you had to give an idea or an estimate, uh, I think was. at that point we were probably about 40 or 50. Um, you know, we 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 come in numbers. Uh, you're you've got to have when you send people in, you've got to have people backed up, ready to go in case something happens to them to go get them. So they're in gear, they're in suits that are non-breathable because you're dealing with a chemical that you don't want to penetrate and to access you. So it's hotter than normal. It's, it's more, um, it, it, it drains you more than, than our regular duties. So we gotta make sure that everybody's covered and backed up. And then my last question is, with this particular rail yard, is the entire rail yard closed right now? Like, is there, is, is there any part of it that can still be accessible for whoever's gonna be working here? Or is this all completely shut down until the situation is uh, handled? Well, I mean, you gotta realize that we were evacuating homes back behind us to the west of us and had this road shut off, they weren't in operation at all. I mean, if it's not safe for those people, we're not, we're not gonna allow them, they're not gonna allow them to go in and, and do any work. Um, no trains were coming through, everything was shut down. So the homes you're saying that, that possibly were affected were on like the Powers Avenue side? Yep. Yep, okay. that's what was evacuated. I sent out a map. I saw um, the map, but it kind of seemed like that was like the, the border. I think it's I think it's on that side because the wind shifted to the west. Oh, that's the map. Yeah. Yeah, it's I it's Put my phone on TV. So yep. it it's uh you know it that's the whole thing because the winds were were shifting back and forth. So one minute it was going to the east, one minute it was going to the west. Okay. So.